Oklahoma. The other cows, they are slaughtered beforehand so you don't see it in all of them. In the United States, annually there are 30,000 cases of leukemia, there are 70,000 cases of lymphoma and if you get leukemia and lymphoma or one of your family members does and you go to the doctor and you say and you're going to ask, how did I get this disease? The answer is always going to be, we don't know how you got it. And that's true, they don't know. But could it possibly be a virus? I mean, after all, you know that uh, leukemia can be spread by a virus. You go to the veterinarian and take your cat in for a feline leukemia vaccination, don't you? You think it's a problem with your cat? Why wouldn't it be a problem with the cows? And what sense does it make to consume leukemia viruses? I mean, think about it. Next time you walk up to the refrigerator with your child or grandchild, think about Paul pouring them a tall, cool glass of leukemia virus. I'll bet you'll think twice. Now this has been known for more than 35 years. This was actually discovered in 1969 that the herds were infected with these viruses. The excuse has been by the cattle industry and the United States Department of Agriculture that this is not a problem for people. It's okay for these viruses to be in the cows. It's okay because the tests that we're using show that this infection does not cross over into human beings. And that's been the reason that they have taken no action and has not, have not made this public. is because the crude tests available have not shown that this is a public health hazard because they cannot identify these viruses in human beings. The bovine leukemia and the bovine AIDS viruses. Well, that's all changed. As a matter of fact, a study published in December of 2003 from UC Berkeley changed all that. They looked at uh, about 250 people from UC Berkeley. They examined their blood by modern techniques and they found by the presence of antibodies which indicate infection that 74% of people have been infected with bovine leukemia viruses with an antibody response. Other interesting research from the same investigators, when they examined breast cancer cells, they found that 10 out of 23 human breast cancers contain these bovine leukemia viruses. Milk is promoted to children and it's promoted to children aggressively. You as a parent may say to yourself or to your spouse, you may say, well, it's okay, I'll give up the milk because I'm an adult, I'm through growing, but not the kids, not the grandkids. It's absolutely necessary for them to consume milk because of growth, they've got to have healthy bones, they've got to have good health in general and we know because of years of education by the dairy industry and people who work for them either directly or indirectly that it's absolutely essential that you feed kids milk so what you may not do for yourself, which would be wise, which is to give up the dairy products, you would be very reluctant to do for the kids. I ask you to rethink that. The dairy industry has teamed up with the school board to develop programs to take and sell kids dairy products and on the internet you'll find statements as to their efforts. They say the goal is to guide school aid children to become lifelong consumers of dairy products. Dairy Checkoff 2003 makes this statement. The 2003 activities will target students, parents, educators and school food service personnel to make children lifelong consumers of dairy products. Now where have you heard a similar statement? To target children to make them lifelong consumers. That's right, for the tobacco industry. Almost the exact words and the consequences I'm trying to share with you are very similar. Annual milk consumption of children between the ages of 6 and 12 increased to 28 gallons per child per year. Children under the age of 18 drink 46% of the milk. Their efforts work. I, I remember as a kid that I was required to drink milk and it was really hard to turn it down. It was only two cents a carton. But I absolutely hated it. I could hardly get through those school milk lunch programs when I had to drink the milk unless it was chocolate milk. Then I could get it down. 
Well, that's one of the things, of course, that the dairy industry is doing is they're flavoring the milk with chocolate and strawberry. They're putting fancy cartons and straws and all kinds of promotional deals to get these kids to drink the milk. And they're succeeding. And you as parents, you as consumers probably believe this is in your children's best interest. It's not. An interesting study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, they looked at uh, 65 severely constipated children. Now to get into that category of severely constipated, you had to have a bowel movement every three to 15 days and that was almost always initiated with a laxative, strong laxatives. And they took these kids and they took them off dairy products. And what they found is that nearly 70% were completely cured almost overnight by taking the kids off dairy products. When they examined the children's bowels, they found inflammatory reaction in the bowel tissue. They found that these kids had fissures and other things that caused them terrible pain related to the constipation caused by the dairy products. Now they took these children eight to 12 months later and they put all the kids back on dairy products and all the children who had originally responded redeveloped constipation. Now this isn't just 68 kids that happened to be in this particular study. I used to be a general practitioner. For three years I saw kids. For three years I saw constipated kids in terrible pain. This is a usual problem, not just one that appears in the scientific literature. Just for this problem alone, you would think that the school lunch programs, the US government would take and ban these products from the schools just to relieve that simple kind of suffering, which is not only painful but also very embarrassing for a child. You look around your neighborhoods and you see kids with, with snotty noses. You talk to the parents and they're taking the kids to the doctor every month for ear infections. Do you think this is normal? You think kids are supposed to have snotty noses and ear infections? Kids will have uh, gastroesophageal reflux, asthma, eczema problems. This is not normal. This has all been tied to the dairy product consumption that's encouraged by the dairy industry and most of us have bought into. There's a more serious problem that affects kids. It's called type 1 diabetes. Horrible disease. You've ever, if you wouldn't want to wish something so terrible on a family as to have a member develop type 1 diabetes, it's not just a disease of children, even though this used to be the most common kind of diabetes in children. These days, because children are getting so fat, they're developing a lot of type 2 diabetes, which is now, it is now becoming competitive as far as the number of cases, type 1 versus type 2. Well, type 1 diabetes is where the pancreas is destroyed. The initiation of that destruction is caused by cow milk protein entering the bloodstream. That's what the scientific research says. In fact, it is so compelling that the American Academy of Pediatrics Work Group on Cow's Milk Protein and Diabetes in 1994 made a statement that still stands today. They said early exposure of infants to cow's milk protein may be an important factor in the initiation of the beta cell destructive processes in some individuals. Beta cells are what make insulin in the pancreas of the child. And they recommended that you stop feeding cow's milk to children to prevent insulin dependent diabetes, type 1 diabetes. Many of you are on the internet and if you go to the internet and you plug in cow milk or cow's milk and some interesting diseases, you'll find that the internet at the National Library of Medicine will take and provide you a tremendous amount of information on how cow's milk, particularly cow milk protein, is associated with many of our common diseases. If you go there and type in some of the following diseases, you'll find some very interesting research that shows that cow's milk is associated with or definitely the cause of various problems that are quite serious and quite common, like canker sores, tonsil enlargement. You think it's normal to have enlarged tonsils? These tonsils are enlarged to take and defend you. What they do is they serve a purpose. What happens is tonsils form a barrier at the beginning of the intestinal tract and they're there to protect you from invading substances like viruses and bacteria. Well, one of the invading things that comes into the body that's not natural and shouldn't be there is cow milk. Not human breast milk, but cow milk. And so the tonsils enlarge and then they eventually get worn down and infected. There's actually a study done where they took children off of cow milk with very severe tonsil enlargement and the tonsils, they shrunk. Vomiting problems, gastroesophageal reflux, ulcer disease, various colic problems. Even children that are breastfed. You know children who are breastfed are not supposed to get colic? But they do if the mother consumes cow's milk. And then what happens is the cow milk protein, you can actually measure this in the mother's milk. It goes into the baby's intestinal tract and the baby gets colic. 
So not only do you have to breastfeed your child, you also have to clean, have a clean diet yourself to prevent this common allergic type of reaction called colic from occurring in a breastfed baby.